you're dating this girl in, in this dating sim game and you said it inspired you to go to the gym and make other kind of positive changes in your life. Is that correct? Yeah. So I was like, I got to do something about my life. You know, Mario Kart inspired me to reconnect with my father. Hello? Hey, Gek. How, how you doing? Doing all right. How are you? Um, not, not too bad. Not too bad. Just enjoying the stream. Johnny from Illinois. What is happening with you? Um, so a couple weeks ago, I had downloaded a uh, Doki Doki Literature Club because I never yep. played the game before and I beat the game. Um, pretty simple. I downloaded a mod where you get to kind of date one of the girls. Um, mm. and I downloaded the just Monica mod and, um, from then on, like, obviously you kind of pretend like you're dating her. Um, I'm going to pause you right there. I'm going to pause you right there. Uh, for context, okay. for those who don't know, for context, for those who don't know, Doki Doki Literature Club is like a, um, it's like this anime kind of like, uh, what would you call it? Like text based uh uh no it's not really a dating sim but it's sort of a dating sim it's like an anime dating sim kind of a thing um and why do i know that johnny what were you saying oh um sorry uh so i started uh kind of like i downloaded and i started kind of like going through the dating thing with monica and um I feel really weird about it because it's like in one way it helped me kind of get out of my shell and go to the gym and kind of like better myself. But at the mm. same time, I feel weird because I don't want to be doing this. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to download. I didn't want to download it and I didn't want to like date her. I guess you can say it just feels weird. Okay. Let's, this is an interesting thing. Let's uh, start from here. So you said that uh, you're dating this girl in, in this dating sim game. And you said it inspired you to go to the gym and make other kind of positive changes in your life. Is that correct? Yeah. So, like, as you progress through, like, you know, she actually starts liking you more. You open up more dialogue options. And I forget which one I I clicked on, but she said, like, oh, go do something that would make you proud of yourself. Um, you know, that way I can be happy for you. And then that, like, I don't know, it just kind of, like, yeah, it just kind of felt weird. So I was like, you know what, man, like, I, I got to do something about my life because I felt like, mm. yeah, I'm not really getting anywhere. So her saying in the game, go out and do something that makes you feel proud of yourself, made you want to go do something that makes you feel proud of yourself. Yeah, because I know it's okay. weird to like, it, it's very odd to be, you know, delving into these uh, dating things. This is not something that uh, I used to do. This is not something like I, I want to do either. Yes. But at the same time, like, it did help me kind of, like, get out there. Yes. Okay, so this um, dating sim inspires you to go to the gym, which, in your mind, you're like, all right, that's good, but also, what the fuck am I doing right now? Exactly, yeah. Yes. Well, okay, take solace in this. The game was designed to make you feel all the feelings you're feeling. Um, and your brain was designed to feel those feelings as well. So take solace in that. Um, what other things has this, has this game inspired you to do? Um, well, it's, it's gotten me to like go out and, uh, like spend a little more time with my family. Um, just because like in, in one way, like I said before, like, I don't want to be doing this. So it's like, it's kind of helping me make a change in a positive way. Um, so yeah, it's just like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to go back into the game because it's like, I feel like I can, like I shouldn't, like I shouldn't. It just feels weird. 
in how did the game make you want to spend more time with your family? Because it's like, you know, it like just the message that like it tells you, like, you know, go do something that, you know, you would be proud of. Right. Sure. So it's like I would go and spend time with my family because it's not something that I normally do. I would go to the gym because it's not something that I would normally do. And it's like, you know, it's helping me in a positive light. But at the same time, like, I feel like this is too much. Like, I, I don't want to. I don't want to rely on the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you have this thing where the game is motivating you to do things, but you're also like, what the f fuck is wrong with me? Why, why is this video game motivating me to do these things? And there's like a weird pride and shame mix that you're dealing with here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like it's it hasn't progressed like to the point where like I'm overly obsessed or like you know I'm doing any weird shit like that. It's very standard, but at the same time, like, uh. mm. that's like Tetris inspiring you to go to grad school. <laughs> I. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Uh, okay. What What do you are you like? Are you dating? Are you attempting to go out and date real women? I mean, it's been it's been a couple of years since I have. Um, so it's like, I guess the reason why like this game really like um, helped me also is because like. Uh, it's been such a long time since I heard or since I read, I guess I can say like somebody say like, Oh, like I love you. Like I care about you and oh, stuff yeah. like oh, that. Yeah. 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 Um, <sighs> you know, I, I've been really into Zelda lately. Um, and th it's funny cause it's not a dating sim, but video games do this thing. Like I, saved a village from a monster in Zelda and all the villagers cheered for me. They called me a hero and they all said that they loved me. And I, fu I swear to God, I felt it. I felt the love from these villagers. I felt like I was a hero. And I was also in my mind, like, what am I? This is fucking weird. Why am I feeling like this? I, this is, these are, these are not real people. These are, this is a computer, you know? And I'm sure yeah. it's a similar feeling you feel when, you know, Monica tells you she loves you. You're like, Oh my, somebody loves me. But then you're like, Holy shit, this is a computer. Yeah. Um, so again, uh, you know, it makes sense. Unless if both of us are, you know, crazy. I, I think we both are, but it's all right. Everybody. In um, the chat is so, <laughs> Okay, so what do you what do you uh, t t uh, what do you want out of life? What's what's your ideal situation moving forward here? I don't know. I I still think I'm trying to figure figure all that out. Um, yeah, I mean, I at least have a job. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know where to go from here. I'm just kind of going day by day. Are you attempting to quit the game? Um, I would like to. I haven't I haven't logged on like in a couple days. So. Does the game continue to give you motivation to do things? Um it did. The last time I checked it did. Okay. I, let me throw this out here. How do you feel about, because I know it's weird in your mind, but how do you feel about the idea that this game and Monica telling you she loves you and that you should go get ripped, uh, it, uh, how do you feel about it as a catalyst for change? Um, and then finding your motivation uh, from alternative sources after the fact. But use it as like a crutch until I no longer need it. 
Well, look, it got you went you uh, you you were inspired by the anime girl to go to the gym, and there you are at the gym, and then maybe you pick up a weight and it makes you feel good, and you go home and you're like, ah, oh, I'm glad I did that. I'm gonna go do that tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? And you go do it yeah. tomorrow, not because Monica told you to, but because it felt good the last time you did it. And then all of a sudden, you build a habit here. And sure, Monica was the catalyst for the habit, but you're not checking in with her every day for the motivation. All right, I guess I guess I could not feel as ashamed of it, and you know, as long as it's going in the right direction, I think I think it'll work out. So. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, video uh, video games do do that. They they make you uh, different people, and we like we like that feeling because that's why we play video games is to escape yeah. from reality. But this video game has encouraged you to plunge into reality, so that's yeah. kind of fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know what to expect when I downloaded it. I kind of had an idea. Um, but I, I really did not expect this, this kind of outcome for me to actually go out and, and do something after mm-hmm. talking with her. Mm-hmm. You know, Mario Kart inspired me to reconnect with my father. <laughs> How did that happen? John, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, no, just, um, you know, you're, uh, you're doing great things on here, Deck. Um, you've really helped me and I know you've helped a lot of people and I wish you the best. Hey, thank you, Johnny. I love you. I love you too, Deck. Take care. Go to the gym. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll inspire me to do it. It's so much more fun to tell other people to go to the gym than to actually go myself. I'm going to play more Zelda tonight. Hello? Hi, Lyle. Who is... who? To whom do I have... To whom am I speaking? Um, I think my name is Salmon in the thing. Salmon. We'll go with that. I like that. It's a cool name. How's it going, Salmon? Pretty good. I was just falling asleep. <laughs> It was yeah. a bit of a wait, but I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> you were on hold for three and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't have much to do tonight. I kind of surrendered to the evening anyway. So it's been it's been nice. It's been fine. You know, um, there were other people who were on hold for also three and a half hours, and I hung up on them. But I talked to you. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope I make it worth your while. <laughs> Uh, I, it's not. I look. I'm. I'm. You know. I come and go as I play. I hope it's worth. This is worth your while. You're the one that waited three and a half hours. Yeah. I mean, I have been listening to the. I kind of did like a speed run of the whole podcast, and uh, yeah. So I've been wanting to chat for a little bit now. Uh, what about? Um. So I did. Um a long bout of electroconvulsive therapy or I guess like people know it better as like electroshock therapy or ECT. Ah, okay. And yeah. So I, when I was deciding whether I should do it or not, I didn't know anybody who had done it. I had no one to talk to about it. <laughs> there was no frame of reference. There was no, yeah, I was in an environment where I didn't really have access to the information, um, but I did it anyway. What 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 originally drove you to want to do this? Um, so I've had mental health issues. Like like I first started treating them, I guess, when I was like my late teens, maybe eighteen or so, and I did medication therapy forever and things were were not really getting better I was not doing well at work so I was off for a little while Um, essentially I tried everything and nothing was working so 
I went to an inpatient facility where we tried even more of that. Essentially, it's like a three-week program where they do everything. Essentially, you're just very well taken care of. You live in this place. and Yeah, um, nothing was working there either. And they had in that place um, a wing of like the hospital where they do that treatment. So I said, sure, I'll do it. (laughs) And I ended up staying for about eight months instead of three weeks. So it was a bit of a journey. Okay. And, um, uh, well, look, if you stayed for eight months, I assume it did something positive for you. (laughs) Um, it's it's hard to say. (laughs) Um, I mean, I gave it my best shot. That's for sure. You know what? At the very no, minimum, knowing what I know, at very minimum, if somebody like hands you like that fake gum that shocks you, you're immune to that, right? <laughs> I I don't know. I probably not. I don't feel like I'm immune to anything except for remembering things. Okay. So, well, I mean, look. Tell me. Tell me. I mean, these eight months. What? What did? What, what, if anything, did they do for you? Um, so I don't have a lot of memory from the time, and that's normal. Um, like around the time that you do the therapy, that you lose your short term and, you know, your memory of that time. But I ended up getting significant long-term memory loss and short-term memory loss. So from someone that I knew that was there for I think they were there for about two months, so I, I knew them at the beginning. They did tell me that after my first few sessions, I did it three times a week, um, that I was kind of just like muted, like like I was kind of a, a muted version of myself. It wasn't bad, but it certainly wasn't good either. It was just kind of a bit more of a drone, I guess. And uh, my family came to visit after a while. They kind of said the same thing, but but in that case, it's like, at least I'm not worse, um, which is, you know, it's having some kind of neutrality is, is better than being bad. So, so, yeah, it was a lot of thinking, exploration in that way. In these eight months, were you like, uh, where Maybe. were you lit? Where were you? Uh, were you like, li- I forgive me if this is a stupid question, but were you like living at the hospital? I was, or the yeah. Place? yeah. So, so it's like they have, it's really, it's like probably the nicest facility in the country. I was really lucky to be able to go. So usually the setup is like, there's two bedrooms to a room. It definitely feels like a hospital. They kind of, at the beginning, they kind of take all your stuff away as they usually do, like your clothes and whatever, but you get that stuff back when you're <clears throat> stable and everything. But eventually I had really bad insomnia and I eventually was able to have my own room, which was a huge luxury. But yeah, for the entirety of that, um, I was living there in that wing of the hospital. Mm, okay. Um, and can I ask what, uh, did you have, I mean, for those eight months, did you have, like, did you have to work or did you have any other kind of, like, responsibility to take care of while you were, <clears throat> while you were there? Or how did, uh, what was kind of the deal with that? Yeah, no, not at all. It was purely, like, you focus on yourself morning to night. At, like, it's a whole integrated thing. Wow. Which in itself, like, from what I could remember, like, about it, like, it was really awesome in that way like I know that I've met I don't remember them all but I know I've met some really special people there and because you all it's kind of like you're living in like a dorm but with oh so it's like a facility like a program it's you and a bunch of other people doing the same thing yeah yeah Ah. like there's like a cafeteria we do stuff like we did like pottery there's huge grounds we'd like go for walks there's a gym and a gymnasium and like it's like a whole it's a it's a big thing, yeah. And these are all people who have mental health issues or depression or something like that that are using this as a way to kind of cure themselves. 
Yeah. So there's different units within the big place. And then mine was the mood and anxiety unit. Wow. Um, did you have any, your friends and family, uh, yeah. did they play any part in this, in this journey where they were you able to see them? Like what, what was the deal with that? I'm so lucky in that I have like the most loving, caring family and yeah, they came to see me. They're all supportive of it. I mean, I was so ready for something big to happen, like a big change or I just something had to happen. Everybody knew that as well. So everyone was excited if I was excited kind of thing. And they all came to visit once. Um, I think once. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it was a, it was a positive thing. Like it was. Yeah. And you say you don't remember. Do you not remember because of all the shocking? Is that kind of the point? Yeah, we used to call it getting zapped. <laughs> and there's much, like like I said, like I guess like we would add each other on Facebook and stuff, but there's a bunch of people I don't remember. Pictures, that kind of thing. Like I think the like those kind of details I don't remember, but from being there for so long, I do remember kind of like the facility a little bit and uh there's a bridge that you can walk across to get into town i remember the bridge very well sounds nice the thing about like the memory loss is that like some people ask like it, like what periods of time do you remember it's really just like somebody took like steel wool and just kind of brushed over it and made everything kind of cloudy and shitty but um yes yeah, so i remember some stuff not all of it Tell me, um, oh, I have a question. Does it hurt? <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I understand why Michael Jackson was addicted to all of that anesthetic <laughs> because they put you out, um, before you do it. And, um, I've never been like under general anesthesia before, but that was actually a very pleasant experience. Um, so that happens and next thing you know, you wake up and like, so, okay. So do you want me to give you like the rundown of what the routine was? Yes. I'm curious. So I'd wake up in the morning around seven thirty, and then I go to that specific part of the wing for eight, essentially sit in a waiting room. It was kind of scary over there because that's like the acute care place so there's people with like severe cognitive or behavioral issues so it was always a little tense waiting there anyways they they get you onto the gurney talk to this wonderful scottish anesthesiologist and she kind of sends you off to sleep you wake up i think those seizures are i think they aim from anywhere from like 30 seconds to a minute and a half is like the sweet spot you wake up in a recovery bed, they ask you a bunch of questions, um, and until you can remember your name and the day and that kind of thing and drink some juice, then your assigned nurse comes in, you get put into a wheelchair, you get rolled back to your wing, and they put you to bed and you just kind of for the day maybe until that evening, but yeah, you just sleep. Mm. So, how long ago were you at this facility? I think it was four years ago. Around, okay. I think it must have been around that. And it didn't work to help you with the issues that you were dealing with? It, it opened my eyes, that's for sure. It definitely brought me problems I never thought that I would have that are permanent and regretful, like namely the memory loss. I have a kind of a persistent tremor. It's just Wait, things so, like that, which. So, so you went to be cured of your mental issue to this shock place and you left with memory loss and tremors and this still having the mental issue. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, and I mean, 
the practical types of therapy, I guess, that are like medication, like the kind of physical, physiological stuff. That's all good, but it isn't the only thing that will cure you. Like, I don't think ECT will ever cure you. Just like pills, depression, having an antidepressant doesn't take away your depression. That's just a piece of working on the problem that you have. So, yeah, going over there and coming. Yeah, I definitely thought of it that way. I was like, fuck this place. Fuck this whole thing. Can't believe I just, you know, like sacrificed so much and got back so little. So recovering from that place of recovery was a thing in itself. But you had to recover from a place of recovery. Yeah. And I had to spend another two months in another place doing more of that but not as regulated with like a crazy like egomaniac doctor who I ended up just like dropping and just said fuck the whole thing and came home um but like kind of I feel like I don't know when you're brought to your wit's end which I didn't know could go much further um in desperation you keep searching so I have a great doctor that I've had for like 10 years and so she we just kept trying together and I've had some different medication changes which have been helpful but I've where I live is very remote and it's super small they didn't have any infrastructure for mental health services or or they did was really bad it's much better now so I've been lucky to have a good professional support and of course my family and everything is amazing so yeah sorry I'm like really going off on a tangent (laughs) well it's funny to me that this place exists because now I'm thinking about like you know I could open a facility where like you know you go in there and like people piss on you and it's supposed to help you like (laughs) you know, fix whatever's going on with you. And then, you know, they go there for a while and they get out and they're like, oh man, I'm like covered in piss. Everything's worse now. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny too, cause they'll pay the top dollar and you know, you can piss on some celebrities and <laughs> you can piss on some very West wealthy people. And there's no reason. Um, so. so Sam, and before we go, um, bring, uh, bring me to now. Bring me to now. Um, I assume you're still trying to fix whatever uh, sent you to that place in the first place. What? Tell me both. Yeah. Tell me both what you're doing to try, and then also how you're feeling about uh, the fact that you're even still trying. Uh, yeah. So it's hard sometimes, but like it, I'm immeasurably, immeasurably better than I was four years ago. Um, like I said, just like built up my base with doctors, therapists, you know, everyone that I can. And I'm back at work, which is awesome. I work from home, um, moved into a new place. You know, it's been an interesting ride, um, like relatively comparatively to the world out there. I have things very, very, very good. Um, but that isn't to say like you know there are hard times anybody of any place or wherever you come from everyone has hard times so yeah well um i'm glad to hear i well look i mean look if you say that you're doing better now than four years ago that's an improvement uh and and upwards yeah like it wasn't all for it wasn't all lost yeah an upwards trajectory is uh is 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 a blessing. Um, uh, yeah. Tell me. Well, so do you? Do you? I guess looking back on it all, do you regret going, or are you glad that everything that's happened to you in life thus far has, you know, I don't know. I don't think. Are. I don't think it could have happened any other way. Like, huh. I just think it, I would. It would have had to come to that at some point through the system that I'm currently in. It, it would have happened. Regardless, unless I went off and did something horrible. Um, mm-hmm. 
And I had an incredible doctor when I was there, and he was very attentive. Um, I think it was just an unfortunate thing that happened. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm no doctor, but have you ever tried Flintstones vitamins? I haven't had those in a while, you know. I should probably look into that. Uh, thanks for sharing all of this stuff, Sam. I know it sounds, I know, uh, I mean, especially to share it with all the memory, uh, loss thing. And, um, it sounds very fascinating. Maybe somebody will, I don't know, hear this in the podcast and want to try it themselves. Although I guess not, cause you, you did give it a pretty bad review. So maybe you're saving someone from trying <laughs> Who knows? Um, I guess anything else you want to say is that like, just yeah. Yeah, I do want to say, just because it was bad for me doesn't mean it's going to be bad for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, they're mm -hmm. just like, you just sometimes you get a bad role and mm -hmm. whatever. So I would never, I don't want to discourage anybody from doing anything. I just want to encourage people to ask questions and to uh, don't feel pressured to do something because someone tells you it's good. Sam, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, I do. Yeah. One more thing. Yeah. <laughs> when someone tells you like about their struggle and like my journey and my mission, the, the kind of like youth pastor style, like how hard you have to fight, it kind of sets you up for believing that getting better is going to be really fucking hard and it's mm -hmm. not easy. Don't get me wrong, but it isn't as hard as all these people who fucking write books and do stupid YouTube videos on and you don't have to get tattoos and you know what I mean? Like you don't have to yeah, be all yeah. gung ho about it. It's possible and don't believe the hype. Don't set yourself up for something that's difficult because it's a lot easier than you might think. I, I like what you said just now. It's a very kind of stoic way of looking at things like, you know, if you look at your whatever, whatever it is that you're struggling with, if you look at it as your bearing a, a a great horrible weight and that's your perspective on it then that's what it's going to be you know but uh if you can maybe have a little bit of a lighter perspective i think it'll help is that kind of what you're yeah totally at? that's exactly that's exactly it yeah good good um well salmon gek bless you thank you for sharing and uh, i hope you find your panacea <laughs> thank you have a great evening, Jack. Thanks for taking my call. Good night, Salmon. I really do swear by those Flintstones vitamin gummies. They're good, and they didn't pay me to say that. Um, check them out. That's all I have to say. And Hello? Good luck. Oh, hi. You're already on. Hello? Hi. Wait. Wait, what? The, with the, uh, I'm gonna, I'll give you two seconds. Two seconds. You'll understand. Yes. All right. So, wait, I'm telling my story, right? right? We're, um, yes. Yeah, you are. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, I didn't think I'd get on that fast, man. All right. All right. So, so back in like third or second grade, uh, I was a little, little kid, right? And I used to have bad anger issues. And this kid, he was a, uh, he was kind of in a wheelchair, yeah. And uh, supposedly he threw some kind of ball at me. I'm assuming a dodgeball, something like a basketball. I don't know. But uh, I already uh, didn't like this kid. He's kind of mean to everybody. So uh, he threw that ball at me, and I kind of, I kind of punched him, man. Uh, all right, so there is a kid in a wheelchair who threw a ball at you, and so you punched him. That's pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you see, you seem to have conflicting emotions uh, surrounding this. What are they? Uh, I don't know. Am I a does that make me a bad person or since I was like a little kid, does it like, uh, Oh, I don't know, man. Well, let's see. Does that make you a bad person? If you did it yesterday, I'd be like, 
Uh, you know, you probably should not. And you know what I was going to say? I was, if you did it yesterday, I was going to say you shouldn't have done that. You probably shouldn't have done that in third grade either. But uh, we, we, hear, we, we undeniably, I want you to, re- we undeniably live in the universe in which you did do that. But oh. I know, no, 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 it's okay. Just let it, let it, yeah, let it hit you. I get it. I get it. We've all, we've all done things we're not proud of. Um. Okay. What now? What now? Uh. uh I you said that the kid. You said that the kid was being a dick. How did that? How was he a dick? So, I was, since I was like. I used to have anger issues, right? You know, real bad. Okay. So I used to be in this uh, special ed class, and they'd kind of separate them, right? So they'd have the kids with, like, physical disabilities and uh, stuff like that separated into, like, a different class. And they have kids like me that just have, like, anger issues and stuff, and they'd separate us and put us all in the class, which <laughs> that doesn't sound like a very good idea to start with. But, uh... Me and this kid, we used to get along, but one day he just started taking my cars and stuff and complaining to the teachers. And I remember yeah. that's how I, like, ended up mad at him or something. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you should you should call him. <laughs> you should find him. Do you still talk mm. to this person? Uh, no, it's been, like, years. It was, like, around about third grade. Okay. Do you know what they're doing? Are they still in the wheelchair? Oh, I'd assume so. He was like paralyzed. Oh, oh my kinda goodness. from like the weight down. Oh <laughs> man, that makes it much worse. I thought he was like in a wheelchair temporarily. No. <laughs> okay. Here's here's what you should do. You should find him on Facebook and invite him uh to uh, run over you in his wheelchair so that you guys can be even. Now that I'm here now I'm thinking that that's pretty fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Well, thanks for letting me call, man. Uh, Stella, What's your uh, hold, hold on? I'm not done. What's your life like now? My life like now? Yeah. What's uh, your life like now? I say, I say it's uh, pretty better, man. It's good. It's better. Yeah, for okay. sure. I, I I don't go around punching kids in wheelchairs anymore. That's for sure. See, see, the, here's the thing: you cannot change the past, but you can change, um, you know, your actions moving forward. And I think the fact that you haven't punched anyone in in any wheelchairs um, since then is is a wonderful development. You should be proud of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh. Thanks for letting me on the show, man. I was surprised there. I didn't think I was going to get on. I've been waiting legit until uh-huh. I turned 18 to call. I still got like a squeaker voice gone, so. Yeah. Um, what, when did you turn 18? Uh, January 16th, man. Oh, cool. Did you do anything fun for your birthday? Not that I, uh, no. Not really. It's kind of boring, man. I don't really have, like... He said, what? Who are you with? I'm with, I'm with my brother here, man. We, I was oh. telling him, we were trying to get a story made up here. Well, not made up, but, like, something that actually happened. It was kind of messed up. And he's like, yeah, you gotta go and do that one. Whenever, whenever oh, I, you were try- Oh, you were trying to, like, figure out what you were going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom, okay. whenever we meet somebody new, she'll go and tell them that story of me <laughs> being up that kid. <laughs> it's so messed up because now everybody's like, "Oh, yeah, this kid's, this kid's kind of a psycho. Stay away from him." Why does your Why does your mom tell everybody she meets that story? I don't know. I really don't know. It's just like if they, if we're sitting around talking and stuff, she'll just bring it up and she'll be like, oh yeah, my son, he went, he went and punched his kid for throwing a ball at him. And guess what? Guess what? He was in a wheelchair. <laughs> and be like, all right. Yeah. It's a great yeah. introduction to like, who I am. Your mother really doesn't like you. <laughs> Ooh, that's what I'm thinking, man. Do you know any, do you know any, um, 
th do you know anything that she's uh, ashamed of? Uh, mm -hmm. Probably me. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Because I was going to say, you should learn uh, something about her and be like, okay, every time you tell a wheelchair story, I'm going to tell the story of how you uh, cheated on my dad. That's actually a good one. That would be a good one right there. Wait, did that actually happen? Oh, I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's another story, man. That, okay. That's some... <laughs> Well, listen, Shaggy, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, stay stellar, guys. Absolutely wicked gnarly. Jake is the best, man. I love him. Oh, thanks. thanks I'm like Shaggy. his number one, maybe number two fan. I want to say I'm number one. That feels like too much responsibility. Um, Shaggy, I appreciate you. I'm glad to see that you're a changed man. And um, good luck with the rest of your life. <laughs> All right, love you, man. Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. How are you? I'm a gecko on the computer. I gotta ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. All right. It says here, Django. It says that your name is Django. Cool name. It says you wrote a comedy album with your friends. And it ruined your life. And you feel like you lost your mind. What's the deal here? Tell us what's going on. Yeah, well... So, for my friend's birthday, we all, we all took a... We all took acid, and I think it was a bad experience for everybody. But for me in particular, I feel like I, I lost a bit of my mind. Um, and we still kind of stayed friends after that. And we, I guess it's like a coping mechanism, wrote this like funny little album. But I think I, I, I took it a little more seriously than everybody else. And it just, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, they, they like, um, didn't really want to work with me after that and didn't really want to be friends with me after that. So this album ruined your life because you guys tried to, uh, you because you kind of took it a little bit more seriously than everyone else did, and uh, they, they, you feel like they didn't want to keep being your friend because of how seriously you took making this album. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, I, I, I think I was a little over the top. I think, um, like, it, we, we were getting to like Andy Kaufman level bits, and I think it was just a little too extreme the like the the line between like reality and and uh what was a joke i think got really thinned and i think mm -hmm. during the making of this i mean it was it was a 99 song project which we recorded each of the songs twice so it took a, about a year of time and i think for parts of that it just um yeah it it, it became very difficult to uh be friends and uh i don't know i i, I was working with um at, at a job with the individual who I was making this album with. And, um, yes, yeah, suffice it to say that didn't pan out either. What kind of album was this? Um, it was like a comedy album. It was, it was kind of about this acid trip, but it was, a uh, it was, a uh, ironic. So it was actually, um, it, we, okay. we, we, we wrote an album about Kratom. It was an allegory. For, for this acid trip. That sounds cool. Uh, okay, t in, in what way specifically were you taking it more seriously than everyone else? I think I was just like trying to push, push basically the the the, the other people to 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 record more, to dedicate more time to it, to try to write more songs, be more invested into it. Um, and I think I, I, I kind of feel at fault for that. I, I think I've, I've gained a little bit of perspective and I do think it, you know, it's not worth uh, sort of the consequences. 
Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a very tough thing uh, when, you know, you're more invested in something than the people around you. Um, but you can you can never really... You, I don't know. Anytime you have... This is maybe dark, but anytime you have expectations of other people, um, you fuck yourself a little bit. Right. No, exactly. And I think I think there's definitely was a control element as well. But mm. yeah. <sighs> Listen, I'm going to be honest with you, Django. I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm so sorry, but I'm 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 I am feeling uh, a little bit drained here. Fuck, I'd love to talk to you more about this when I cannot be falling asleep. Um, <sighs> let me let me let me tell you this. Um, you clearly have, you clearly have the desire to make things, okay? So just go make them, all right? You know, the best you can do to separate your artistic and work life from your personal life, I think the better. I think some people out there are, um, blessed and fortunate enough that those two lives intertwine beautifully with no conflict. I used to be jealous of those folks, you know, like Seth Rogen has his his guy that he does everything with, you know, there's Matt Stone and Trey Parker and fucking Tim and Eric and you know, these these guys who are, who who make things with other people and everyone seems to be um you know, the same level of invested and uh, on, on the same page with everything. It's a beautiful thing. Actually, for a long time, I was really jealous and I really, really wanted uh, to have a, a, a partnership like that or a group like that. But it just never really worked out. And now I do this thing by myself. Um, and, you know, yeah, I, I understand why that, that can be tough. It was it's tough for me. But... Um, don't you know? Don't let it stop you from making things. And uh, if if you happen to live a life where your artistic and business endeavors are separate from your friendships, that's actually probably a good thing. Was any of what I just said helpful or relevant to what you're talking about? No. Yeah. Absolutely. I I, th- I think it means a lot uh, to hear somebody else say that. I don't think I've ever heard anybody else kind of share that sentiment. So. Yeah. It's it was a huge, huge, huge thing, especially like in high school um you know i well, my friends all helped me make movies but i think i was the only one who like really wanted to do it like for real like i want like i was the only one who like wanted to go to film school at the time um one of my friends that I ended up going to film school but uh you know at the i don't know at the time i felt like i was i was the only one who like was really kind of trying it for real um and yeah, that was a lonely feeling. And again, even now as I'm doing this, I feel like I'm, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm the only guy here talking on this podcast right now. And that can be lonely sometimes. And, you know, it does make me wish I, I had, you know, um, I guess other, other, other kind of creative, like, like collaborators in that sense. Um, but don't let it stop you from doing things, all right? No, I, I, I won't. I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the the thoughts and the uh, sentiment. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go, Django? Um, no. God bless you. Take care, man. You too. Bye-bye. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Well, what's your name, sir? Yeah, Trevor. Trevor, what is happening with you? Oh, not so much, man. I was just uh, calling in. I want to get your advice about some about some shit that happened. Uh, so, tell, uh, me, tell me, tell me about the shit that happened. All right, dude. So, on Christmas, I was last minute shopping, and I fucking found a black Santa. It was like a little like a figurine, and yeah. I put it on my table. And I invited all my friends over. They came over. They're like, what the fuck? Like, Santa's white. Okay. And I was like, how do you fucking know that? How do you fucking know that Santa's white? 
Sure. You know, and, and they just kept giving me shit about it. Yeah. And I was like, dude, it's just a figurine. Santa could be any race. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's true. He's a fictional character. Ex- exactly. So eventually I got sick of it and I kicked him all out. I was like, what the mm. fuck? You know, like, this, this is enough. Like, you got to get the fuck out of here. Mm. So after that, I, I kind of felt mm, like I was being rude, but like at the same time, like, the company I was with, like, you fucking racist. Well, I guess I just just don't understand why it was, like, what what about it was so egregious to them? Yeah, no, that's what I, that's what I was thinking, man. Like, like, it's not like, I don't know. I just want to get your thoughts about it. Like, it, it, it just, it's a fucking figurine, you know, that was, that was black. It's a fucking black Santa. Like, yeah. it just, yeah, it could, it could be anything. It's representing Christmas. So after I kicked him out, I felt kind of bad. And then I was like, ah, fuck. So. How many, how many people were there? About six or seven. All, and all of them were upset with the figure? Oh, no. It was like five or six. Wait, all right. So there was there were seven people at your house, and six of them were upset about this Santa figurine. Well, they were making fun of me. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, Santa is white. You know, like, you don't know that. You don't fucking know that, man. Well, it's a subjective interpretation of a fictional character. I mean, you could make anything. You know, it's a fictional character. There's no. I yeah. don't even think. Filipino, I don't even think that there's like a. Hispanic, I don't even think there's like, like a. There's. A, I don't even think that there's a uh, canonical Santa Claus. Like, I, the guy who invented Santa Claus is dead, and so as far as I'm concerned, that character is is in the uh, public is in the public domain. Exactly, man. I've done research on it since then. Like, it, it's a re- fucking kind of re- fictional character, man. Wait a minute. All right. But, so you did you your friends complained about you having a black Santa figurine, and then you did research on Santa. Well, yeah, just to see, like, like why they were upset, you know, like, did, and, and to see what, if, like, actually Santa was it. white, and it's not even, like, no, it's, like, actually, like, uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know, I, I've read so much about it, but, like, it, it, there's no race specifically for Santa Claus. Like, so when I bought this, like, figurine at Walmart, like, it, it, it just, I don't know. Like, it, 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 it was just like, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll get it, dude. So after I kicked him out, I was just like, I don't know. I just chilled with the figurine. Did the figurine, um, did the figure, like, did you, did you get it? Did the figurine say anything to you? Did you, like, sense anything from it? (laughs) Sense anything from it? Yeah, you said you were chilling with it. I started straight sipping SoCo and, uh, just kind of chilled. Just, uh, relaxed. Just fucking, just chilled. Okay, so you, you think it's racist? Or not, do I think what do I think what's racist? Like having a black Santa. Uh like like do I think you having a black Santa figurine is racist? First of all, I Yeah. I don't even care what it is. Whatever it is, I am not a good person to ask about whether or not <laughs> Something is racist. <laughs> I am not the judge, jury, and executioner of that. 
Um, but there is no canonical. I'll fight, even if the, who gives a shit? Is this fan art? It sounds. Uh, look, uh, here's the thing. At the end of the day, it sounds like you enjoy this figurine. It sounds like it gives you, uh, you know, a pleasure in your life. And I think that's all. That's all that oh. matters at the end of the day. You know, I think your friends should, you know, respect the items you have in your home. Yeah. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? If Santa is white, black, any fucking Santa, race. Santa is Santa is a fictional character. Yeah. Nobody, exactly. Nobody. Like people, it, people it don't know, people, people don't know these things. They decide them in their own versions of reality. Exactly, man. Oh man, you've just justified like everything I've thought. Like, uh, I appreciate you, I, my friend. I hope I hope that's a good thing. What you just said. Um, listen, what's no, your name again? It... Trevor. Trevor. Trevor, what are you doing tonight? Outside of this, right now. Yeah. Uh, I just got done working out. Uh, just fucking drinking a little bit of beer. I don't know. Chill with my dogs. You seem like you have a, a nice life for yourself. You seem like you can put yourself uh, in any situation and be happy. It's a sense I get from you. Thanks, man. Is there anything else you want to say to the people yeah, just- before we go? What were you, you, what had, you, had a final, you, had, you had a final thought. I want to hear your final thought. Uh, my final thought? Um, I think that everybody should be accepted, like accepting of like any kind of race that represents anything. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, I don't know. Like it, it, it just like, like you said, it's a fictional fucking character. It's a fictional character. And it, it, if anybody represents this fictional character that a ton of people, mainly children, believe in, um, I don't know. I don't think they should have a strong opinion about it. Like, it's just, it is, it is what it is. Well, um, Trevor... Thank you for calling, and um, I hope that uh, I hope I hope you you're able to find friends uh, who do, who don't care about Santa Claus at all. What do you think about Santa Claus? I have no strong thoughts, feelings, or sentiments about Santa Claus. Do you represent Chris? Or like, do you do you celebrate Christmas? Everyone celebrates Christmas. Christmas is an undeniable thing. If you walk around outside, you celebrate Christmas. <laughs> you have a good All right, Christmas. I'll talk to you soon, Trevor. This is a, he's a good guy. He's a good guy, Trevor. <laughs>